Good morning, good evening, and good night, wherever you're watching from. I am Mika, and I am here with another Bible story time. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. May you rejoice and be glad in it, and may we all rejoice and be glad in it. Today is a great and glorious day, and um, just a good day. Look at me, great and glorious day, hallelujah. Today is a good day. It, was, it really was a good day. Um, that, that's just, it was just a good day, okay? Um, last week we was in uh, 2 Kings chapter 12. This week we're in 2 Kings chapter 13. And some of the titles, uh, the I guess the paragraph, some of the story going to be about Jehoaz, Jehoaz, Ahaz, Rules in Israel, Jehoash, there's somebody different right here, Rules in Israel, and Elijah's final prophecy. So, okay, we're going to just pray real quick. We're going to pray real quick and go into the word. God, I just thank you um, for your word. I thank you for the Bible. I thank you for the living word. I thank you, Lord God, that your word is true and it is alive and it is well and it's just mm, the sword. Hello. It fights for us. And God, I just thank you for that. Um, have your way, Holy Spirit. I decrease completely. May you increase in me. Have your way. The floor is yours. Amen. Okay, 2 Kings chapter 13, starting at verse 1. Jehoaz, Jehoahaz, son of Jehu, began to rule over Israel in the 23rd year of King Joash's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria 17 years, but he did what was even the Lord's sight. He followed the example of Jero Jeroboam, this J-man, those who don't know, son of Nebat, continuing the sins that Jero Jer Jeroboam had led Israel to commit. So the Lord was very angry with Israel, and he allowed King ha Hazael of Aram and his sons Ben-Hadad to defeat him, them repeatedly. Hello. Oh, you do not want God to be angry with you, because you're going to lose. Anytime you go up against God, anytime you just pick up, you're going to lose. Period. Then Jehoahaz Prayed for the Lord's help, and the Lord heard his prayer, for he could see how severely the king of Aram was oppressing Israel. So the Lord provided someone to rescue the Israelites from the tyranny of the Arameans. Then Israel lived in safety again as they had in former days. Are you serious? That is a good father, y'all. I'm telling y'all, we can be so sick in our sins, so messed up in our sins, going through and doing all these different things. And it clearly said that, but he did what was even the Lord's sight. He followed the example of Jer Jeroboam, and he, J man was something else. Listen here, he was he was he was he was out there. But Jehoaz, Jeho, Ahaz prayed for the Lord's help, and the Lord heard his prayer, for he could see how severely the king of Aaron was oppressing Israel. And the thing is, it's not because of because of uh, the J J man two point had done prayed. It's because his people were in need and were oppressed. Let's not miss that. Because, oh boy, he, he, he did what was even in the Lord's sight. But God still heard his prayer. And God don't just hear and not answer. And God doesn't just hear and not act. Ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit. God don't just hear and not answer. And he doesn't just hear and not act. Ooh, that's good. I caught that. Y'all better caught that because I received that for myself. Amen. Mm. But they continue to sin following the example of Jeroboam. They also allowed the Ashrapo and Samaria to remain standing. Finally, Jehoahaz's armies was reduced to 50 charioteers, 10 chariots, and 10,000 foot soldiers. The king of Aram had killed the others, trampling them like dust under his feet. The rest of the events of Jehoahaz's reign, everything he did, and the extent of his power are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. When Jehoahaz died, he was buried in Samaria, and his son Jehoash became the next king. Ain't that something though? The fact that Je he prayed and God heard him because of his people. Period. He prayed, God heard him and helped him. I don't know who need to hear this. I don't know who needs to, but God heard you and he's sending you a way of escape. He's sending you help. Why? Because he's God and he loves us unconditionally. But that does not excuse, hello, because eventually, if we don't turn and repent, 
and turn back to God, guess what's going to happen? Because they kept sinning. And what they, eventually they were destroyed. Eventually he was wiped out. Eventually God was like, all right, and quit trying and keep trying me. Per. Okay? Verse 10. Jeho, Je, Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, began to rule over Israel in the 37th year of King Jeho, Joash's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria 16 years, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He refused to turn from his sins that from from the sin, from the sins that Jeroboam son of Nebat had led Israel to commit. The rest of the events of Jehoash's reign and everything he did, including the extent of his power and his war with King Amaziah of Judah, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. When Joash Jehoash died, he was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Then his son Jeroboam the second became the next king. We cannot make this Bible up. I said J-Man 2.0, and it really is one. Jeroboam the second became the next king. But the fact that Jehoash, he didn't do what was right in the Lord's sight. So just a pattern of them just, but God just so gracious. Oh my goodness. But he didn't, listen, he didn't reign, uh, he, 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 he didn't reign, a, man, he reigned 16 years. That was a long time. God is so patient with us. Let's thank God. Let's take a moment right now to thank God for his patience. He could have knocked Jay, uh, Jehoash off a long time ago because God knew what he was going to do in the practice because he gave us the uh, freedom of choice. And that's, just, that's one of the greatest love. Like he gave us choice, the freedom of choice. So for him, patient for 16 years, he was patient whew, for 30 with me. Let's thank, let's take a time. Let's pause right now and thank God for being patient with us. And not destroying us when we were sick in our sins. And just doing what it is we want to do. Elisha's final prophecy. Verse 14. When Elisha was in his was in his last illness. King Jehoash of Israel visited him and wept over him. My father, my father. My God. I see the chariots and the charioteers of Israel. He cried. Elisha told him, get a bow and some arrows. And the king did as he was told. Elisha told him, put your hand on the bow. And Elisha laid his own hands on the king's hands. Then he commanded, open that eastern window. And he opened it. Then he said, shoot. So he shot an arrow. Elisha proclaimed, this is the Lord's arrow. An arrow of victory over Aram. For you will completely conquer the Arameans at Aphek. Then he said, now pick up the other arrows and strike them against the ground. So the king picked them up and struck the ground three times. But the man of God was angry with him. You should have struck the ground five or six times, he exclaimed. Then you have beaten Aram until it was entirely destroyed. Now you will be victorious only three times. <sighs> There's so much right there. So much right there. So much right. But we're going to go back to the fact that even then right here. So now we see why Jeho Jehoash of Israel was defeated. Uh huh. Yeah. Jehoash died. Jehoahaz died. He was buried in Samaria. Then Elisha. Okay. So Jehoash was his son. Okay. So the fact. That Elisha about to die. Because he's still being used. Listen, listen, we have not arrived till we die. Period. God ain't done using us until we die. Period. I mean, Elisha on his about to die. He was in his last illness. Sit for the last time. This time unto death. And he's still, God still using him. God still using him. Even in his death, about to die. God is still using him. I don't listen. I don't. It's no, absolutely no excuse why we're not doing what it is God tells us to do. It's absolutely no excuse why we're not walking in the calling that God has us, that God has for us. It's absolutely no reason why we're not doing what God has told us to do. It's absolutely no reason why we're not being obedient to the call, being obedient to His to to Him appointing us for such a time. It's, it's no reason why Elisha is dying, and he's still saying and doing miracle signs and wonders. He's still doing miracle signs and wonders. Still. But the thing is, I needed Jehoash 
mind and his capacity in his mind to be expanded. Cause me, I can say what I can say whatever, but I believe I probably would have hit the ground more than three times. I don't know. But I believe that our capacity to think of just how big of a God we serve, number one. Elisha still being used, that's what we need to do. Die empty, okay? But the fact that Jehoash, Jehoash allowed himself to have a limit to what it is or how God wanted to use him in this moment. Or the type of victory he could have had in this moment. Of course, he didn't know why. And that's why when it comes down to us being obedient to God or doing things, it, we do it blind. We don't have to know why. We don't have, have to know why we have to go over here and do this. We don't have, know why we have to go and work right here. We don't have to know every single thing but us just being obedient to what it is. He said, but the thing is, he was obedient. He was obedient. He, he told him to strike the ground. He just didn't say how many times. But the cap that Joash had on, on God and his limit and his limits and what it is he could do that just you know what he what he thought so if god tell us hey um what's a good example if god tell me hey go over there and i want you to bless this person okay i go over there i know what i have but i, I if, if i don't move in faith in that moment if i don't move in faith like i know what i have I know exactly what it is I possess, but if I go with the mindset that God said, I go with the mindset that God sent me, I should have absolutely no limit to what it is, how I'll be able to bless these people or how I'll be able to bless this person because I didn't send myself. God sent me. So I have no cap and I should not have any type of, any type of limit to what it is God can do in this moment. I should not have any limit to what I believe can happen right now with God saying, go and bless them. Whether it be a word, whether it be with my with some money, whether it be with, just, with anything, I should have absolutely no cap other than me walking in obedience and knowing that God sent me. And walk with a confidence to know that it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Period. Mm. Verse 20. Then Elijah died and was buried. Groups of Moabite raiders used to invade, to invade the land each spring, group of Moabites raiders used to invade the land each spring. Once when it once when some Israelites were burying a man, they spied a band of these raiders. So they hastily threw the corpse into the tomb of Elisha and fled. But as soon as the body touched Elisha's bones, the dead man revived and jumped to his feet. Even in death. Oh my goodness. Let's let this be a prayer for us. Listen, even in death, we still making dead things rise again with what we done did and just how much oil we got on us. My God, that's good. King Hazel of Aaron was opp had oppressed Israel during the entire reign of Jeho Ahaz, Jehoaz. But the Lord was gracious and merciful to the people of Israel and they were not totally destroyed. He pitied them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And to this day, he still has not completely destroyed them or banished them from his presence. King Hazel of Aram died and his son Ben-Hadad became the next king. Then King then Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, recaptured from Ben-Hadad, son of Haziel, the towns had, that had been taken from Jehoash's, Jehoash's father, Jehoahaz. Jehoash defeated Ben-Hadad on three occasions and he recovered the Israelites' town. But let's just go back to the faithfulness of God. Verse 23, but the Lord was gracious and merciful to the people of Israel and they were not totally destroyed. He pitied them because of his what? Covenant, my goodness, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And to this day, he, hey, and to this day, let's talk about today. We talk about tomorrow. We talk about to this day. He still has not completely destroyed them or banished them from his presence. That's so good. God is a covenant keeping God. If he said it, it's settled. We can bank on it. Point blank in the period. But the fact that he was gracious. May we be people. May we be people to know that we serve a good, gracious, and merciful God. A good, good, good father. A good, good, good father that we don't need to have no limits on when he sent us. Go with the expectation that it's going to be good. He's going to exceed our expectations in whatever it is he's sending us to do. 
Whatever it is he's sending us to do, whether it's go this place, go that place, go say this, go do that, go whatever it, wherever it is he's sending us, he's going to see that expectation because he's God, number one. And may we die empty. May we die empty where there is absolutely nothing left on the table here on this earth that we did not uproot and do and give out to this world. May we die empty and let every single thing we have be left right here. And we'll arrive and hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Because we were faithful in the little things, the, the gift that God given, gave us. So when, when we get to our Heavenly Father, my God, and we see him, be well done. You died empty. You have arrived. You're here. That's chapter 13 of 2 Kings. You don't get, hey, listen, die empty. If God sent you, just know it's going to be good and it's going to be above and beyond your expectations. Whatever it is he's telling you to do, whatever, wherever it is he tell you to go, it's going to blow your mind. Know that. And just know that God is a good and gracious God. He's a good and gracious father because even in this, when Jeho Jehoahaz was not good to him, he still was good. He, he prayed and he heard him. He prayed and he heard him. And even then, if, at the end, he remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So therefore, he was gracious and he was merciful. And to this day, he still haven't destroyed him, destroyed his people, destroyed the people. God is a good and merciful God. If you don't remember nothing else, remember, if you're in error in any shape, form, or fashion in your life, repent. Turn back to God. And I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, he's a good and gracious God. And he will remember his covenant. He will remember his covenant with you and be good and gracious to you. And he will hear your prayer and hear you. He will hear your prayer and help you. Next time we're together, we'll be in 2 Kings chapter 14. And I just pray that this bless you as much as it bless me. And I just thank God for his grace and his mercy. It's new every single day. It's new every single day. So have a blessed day. In Jesus' name, amen.